Okay, um, I think we should start because it's already a little bit after one o'clock and um, we might as well get on with it. So um, this, this workshop is about muscle injuries and we really want to make sure that this is a practical workshop rather than a, a lecture series. So um, we've assimilated a group of people who are going to talk about the practicalities of muscle injuries and I have to explain what this is all about for us. At Aspital, we have a strong belief in teamwork, so we don't just work in isolated departments. We have a commitment to evidence-based medicine, so we want to do clinically relevant research which is going to determine how we treat our patients. And we have a particular interest in muscle injuries because of some of the most important injuries in sport, particularly football but also handball. It can result in significant time loss. The treatment is usually conservative. There's only very, very few instances where you need surgery for a muscle injury. And of course, there are many popular but completely unproven treatments out there. So we've, we've had several multidisciplinary, clinically relevant research projects um, on muscle injuries in Aspital. And the most important recent project was the one on hamstrings, specifically the use of PRP in the management of hamstring injury but also looking at rehabilitation protocols and the role of the MR scan in determining the return to sport. So the program for today, I'm going to switch it around a little bit. So we're actually going to start with epidemiology first, and that would be Dr. Cristiano Irali. Then we'll do classification of muscle injuries, and that proves uh, that, that promises to be quite controversial. Bruce has prom to, uh, promised to make it an interesting talk. Uh, then we'll talk about the value of MR scanning and hamstring uh, muscle injuries. And then finally, uh, we have two physios who will be working together to present how we assess and manage hamstring injuries at Aspita. So just briefly, the team. Dr. Bruce Hamilton is the current lead of High Performance Sport New Zealand um, and also the New Zealand Olympic Committee. Um, but he was the previous chief of sports medicine here at Aspita and he has a big interest in muscle injuries. So he's going to be talking about the classification. Dr. Cristiano Irali is the Associate Executive Director of NSMP at Aspita. He's a sports physician, and he also has a big interest, particularly in epidemiology of football injuries. Then we have uh, Philip Jacobson, who's one of our senior physios. He's currently doing some research on the risk factors for hamstring muscle injuries. Adam Weir is... Um, our deputy head of sport, the Sports Groin Pain Centre at Aspita, and is also responsible for overseeing the clinic, clinical research projects in the sports medicine department. And then Nicole van Dijk is a physiotherapist at Aspita, who's also now doing some research, particularly on hamstring injuries and the management of um, hamstring injuries in our research project. So, with no further ado, we'll start with Cristiano. Good morning, every, good afternoon, everybody. Epidemiology of muscle injury. Okay, first of all, uh, thanks for being here in time, and thank you to all uh, concerned people, starting from Celeste, uh, our uh, chairman today, and uh, going up to Dr. Filip Landro for the invitation, and Dr. Neboja Popovic. Uh, I will not make the mistake to forget to thank uh, Dr. Hakim Shalabi and Dr. Khalifa, of course. Um, so, Celeste Sele said that I have an interest in epidemiology of muscle injury. Uh, it is true, but in football. Uh, and so when they asked me to talk about uh, um, handball, at an handball conference, I was a little bit with a problem. And uh, so I was uh, reviewing how to prepare this. And uh, history and personal experience can be a way, uh, an idea, but in reality, uh, I had some story from our CMO for Dr. Popovic, but it was not enough to base the presentation on this. So I was uh, also uh, thinking about reading and studying on handball, but it's not something that you can uh, improvisate. I think you need passion and you need, uh, you are all expert, uh, so I would not come 
to teach handball to you. I would, like an Italian, like Italian do, always, we try to adapt. So I have to find a solution. I have to adapt my experience and, uh, to, into this talk. Um, so I was asking myself, uh, is uh, handball a uh, small football with hands in regard to muscle injury epidemiology? Because if it is yes, problem solved. So uh, there are not many articles on uh, handball injury epidemiology, uh, but we are uh, lucky in order to answer to my question to have uh, almost the same authors uh, publishing uh, uh, the result of epidemiology of handball injuries in uh, uh, elite tournament like the World Cup and the Olympic Games and uh, some young uh, uh, World Cup. Um, so they use the same methodology and the result can be comparable. So they were uh, uh, collecting injuries during match and uh, only uh, medical attention injury. That means the injuries that uh, require the assistance of uh, someone of the medical staff, despite uh, the incidence on, the return, on uh, uh, the return to play. I mean, uh, uh, despite uh, they will affect uh, an absence or not from the competition. So we can see that uh, uh, the World Cup uh, of handball compared with football, it seems that the incidence of, of injury are a bit, uh, a bit uh, lower. So being around 1.5 injury per match uh, compared with uh, two or more during uh, football. In the Olympic Games, we had similar result. And this is regarding men. The same apply with women. Uh, where uh, it seems that the in in incidence of injury, we are not talking only about muscle, but all injuries are a bit lower. Then, uh, which percentage of uh, injury, total number of injury, are strain or muscle rupture? So this is uh, um, regarding handball, and we are always talking about only match injuries and medical attention. We can see how if we compare in big the, the result, uh, we can see that in handball they are included between a minimum of 4% and a maximum of 14% with an average around 6-7%. So 6-7% are muscle injury in handball, which is the percentage in football. Uh, we have a, a big variation also in this case with a minimum of 6% arriving around 20%. But it seems again that uh, the impact is higher. So, uh, speculating a little bit, we can say that uh, probably in handball compared with football, for medical attention injury during matches, we have a lower percentage of muscle injury in a lower incidence. But uh, uh, we know that uh, first the decision of which uh, definition of injury to use is arguable. So we may be more interested in uh, time loss uh, injuries. Uh, and then we have to consider that we have also uh, inclu to include uh, training. And the best way to do this is to do prospe prospective studies uh, on training and matches with time loss injury definition. Uh, there are a lot of studies of uh, such kind uh, in football. And uh, I was able to find uh, um, only one in uh, uh, professional athlete uh, in a handball. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, for the game, we have uh, an, inci uh, an incidence that is uh, uh, about 14.3 injuries per 1,000 hours of exposure. Um, for the practice, uh, we have a 0 0.6. Then we have uh, also some subdivision, sorry, some subdivision between uh, regional league and local league. But uh, let's keep this. So 14.3 and 0.6. I have put, I hope you, will, you are able to, to see that, but uh, I have put uh, a little bit of resuming of uh, all the studies with time loss injury definition in professional football, uh, recent. And uh, we can see that uh, during match, we have an incidence that is variable a lot, but you can see that we reach 44%, 48%, and it seems that most of the study show an incidence more than 20 injuries per 1,000 hours of exposure. 
The same applies to the training incidents. It seems uh, there are no study that show a zero point something incidence, but uh, they, are, uh, uh, they are showing uh, all of them an higher, an higher incidence. So it seems that also considering time loss definition and uh, matches and training, uh, we have probably in handball a lower incidence. Now, um, injury type. So is muscle, the, the number one injury in football is muscle, muscle injury, and uh, specifically hamstring injury. Is this the same in handball? We can see that uh, comparing the result in our uh, league with uh, um, Champions League, it's quite clear, and all the other studies, all the other cohorts confirm this. So muscle and tendon are the injury number one. Um, that paper on um, uh, time loss definition of injury showed that sprain are the major injury in handball. So it seems that uh, it is not, muscle is not the number one injury. This is considering match and training. When we consider only matches and a medical attention, uh, injury is contusion, the most uh, uh, impacting uh, uh, injury. Um, also, location of injury, injury location, tie in football, followed by knee and uh, I would say at the, same at the same way, hip and groin and ankle are the most common location. Uh, it seems that uh, knee and fingers are the most common in handball, uh, with uh, uh, tie not being included even in the first six uh, most common location. So, quite different. Now, mechanism of injury, which can be the similarities of uh, football and handball in regard of muscle injury. Of course, uh, you can have muscle uh, strain with acceleration or deceleration and with change of direction that are present in both sport. But there are also peculiarities that I think is worth to highlight. Um, First of all, we have less hamstring lesion. Uh, discussing a bit with the expert of the sport, but again, it's a speculation, but uh, uh, this is probably due to the fact that uh, uh, you have uh, a different way of sprinting. Uh, you can see the result from ProZone. Short sprint, you never reach uh, a certain uh, speed. Uh, you never uh, reach a certain length, uh, so probably uh, all the mechanisms that are behind uh, hamstring strain in football are not uh, in handball. Then uh, we have much more muscle direct trauma in handball. Is it quite, uh, it's present uh, in football of course, uh, but uh, uh, absolutely no comparison with uh, uh, handball. Um, the direct lesion of the muscle, in my opinion, are uh, something that uh, can be absolutely in included uh, in, um, uh, in, a, uh, in a sort of muscle lesion, so the direct uh, kind. And we should take care with uh, adapted principle, but uh, with almost the same approach. Um, peculiarities, uh, of course, uh, upper body lesion in uh, football, except the goalkeeper, um, are more rare, and if uh, they are present, they don't uh, normally impact uh, the ability to play. So they are not often counted in time loss definition of injury epidemiological studies. Uh, this is not the same in handball, as you can imagine, where pectoralis, abdominal muscle, for example, are included. And then, um, the goalkeeper, probably there is a peculiar mechanism that is not present in football. Uh, it's difficult to have a stretching type uh, uh, hamstring lesion uh, that are present in other, in other sport, uh, of course, uh, like uh, the dancing. Um, so, in conclusion, the muscle injury are, uh, seems to be less in handball than in football, both in medical attention and time loss injury definition approaches. It is not so the number one lesion in uh, handball, so program of prevention should focus with the same uh, impact, with the same emphasis than we are doing in football, uh, also in handball. The question is open. 
And I catch the chance to say that uh, it's clear from my presentation that uh, we need much more studies. Uh, uh, we have just a uh, few, few numbers of research. Uh, we are... Uh, we have the luck to have the World Cup here, and so uh, a group uh, from Aspetar is now collecting uh, uh, medical attention injuries for all the participating teams. And um, uh, so please, if someone is part uh, of the medical staff of the participating team, I beg your attention on this and your data. And then, direct trauma and stretching type lesion are typical of handball, so the prevention program should be tailored also in this way. And uh, so the answer probably to my question is, uh, is no. Um, so probably once we will have more data, we'll come in a few years to do another talk uh, specifically on, um, on handball. I'm not expert enough at the moment. I thank you very much for your attention. I wanted to ask my dear colleague and friend Cristiano, regarding your conclusions, I, we could point out that uh, the direct injuries uh, in handball are like more common. So is there any uh, specific point that we should uh, take into consideration regarding the prognosis or the treatment? Because generally we are more used to treating the, the indirect traumas. Um. Instead of prognosis and treatment, I, would, I think that I would use the data of epidemiology to talk about prevention. And uh, uh, to the, at a first glance, uh, uh, the big difference of, uh, between handball and football uh, is uh, during the matches and uh, the kind of injury that, uh, um, that we see is probably all due to these uh, direct contacts. And uh, so you can see contusion. Uh, that are the first uh, type of injury uh, and uh, I think all the other kind of injuries are consequence of this kind of contact. So on a prevention viewpoint uh, I would um, uh, when the injury are during uh, matches and are mainly due to contusion probably uh, we can look at the rules of the game. There were uh, uh, some sort of experiments uh, uh, done in football when they gave the red card uh, for the tackle from behind and they were able to reduce uh, um, the injury um, rate and the same uh, when they started to give the red card with the uh, elbow. Uh, knockout, let's say, and they reduce drastically again uh, this kind of injury. So from a prevention point of view, I think that uh, probably the best impact would be, I would look at this if I am a manager of the handball medical, more than tailor the prevention program on the, um, on the player. Then I don't understand about nothing about handball, so I don't know how, but uh, this is what.